major features of a planet like Mars have to go through a formal and time-consuming naming process. But this little section of the Mars Valley has been populated with catchy names, many of which we all grew up with. Here's CNN's Jeannie Most to look at some rock stars destined for the Interplanetary Hall of Fame. What does this rock have to do with this bear? I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> Apparently, you have to be a rocket scientist to see the resemblance. And we move toward Yogi. Forget famous Earthling rocks like Plymouth Rock or the Rock of Gibraltar. Barnacle Bill is number one on the rock charts these days, though maybe not for long. We will also look at Scooby-Doo in some detail. And Casper. Don't forget Casper. Who could forget Casper? Not the whitish rock, the ghost. What are you made of? Funny, that's what they keep asking the rocks. Rocks with names ranging from souffle to shark, from platypus to hedgehog. At the Jet Propulsion Lab, there's a panoramic view of the landing site on the wall, dotted with the names of the rocks. And what these guys do, they take the little yellow stickies, and somebody comes along and says, my turn to name a rock. At least you can't call these scientists stiffs. I mean, they could call these rocks, you know, ALH84001 or something. But that's boring. You know, it's Barnacle Bill. Everybody knows what that is. Well, not everyone. Oh, dear, what was the little one? Yogi's the big rock. There was some confusion among non-scientists attending a Mars event at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, Yogi was named after my favorite horse. Horse? Hey, don't feel bad, kid. Even the scientists get confused. I'm not sure if it's shark or wedge, but there's one in the port. Wedge, I'm sorry. Um, what's the other one named? Scooby-Doo? Scooby-Doo, right. Now, nobody claims there's a resemblance between the rock and the true Scooby-Doo. <laughs> the scientists were just being humorous with this one, but many of the names have to do with the rock's appearance. Hippo is shaped like a block. Flat Top and Little Flat Top are flat. The big rock named Yogi, likewise, has a smaller companion named Boo-Boo. Uh, wait here, Friar Boo-Boo. The team's most junior member has been anointed naming czar. Nathan Bridges keeps track of the monikers. Personal names are a no-no. Well, we had a rock named Bob, and um, that'd be great to all the Bobs in the world, but then if we have Bob, we might want Fred or Sally or something. Some back on Earth think the names should be heroes young folks could look up to, rather than names picked on a scientist's whim. Or we're going to start hearing martini or cigar. The public may be able to toss around names of Martian rocks, but do folks know the name of the American astronaut aboard the decrepit space station Mir? Uh, I have no idea what his name is. I've uh, heard it a couple of times. Yes. Michael something, isn't it Michael something? Uh, Michael Full. Maybe it's a good thing science is starting to sound like a romance novel. Rover has nestled up and uh, kissed affectionately Barnacle Bill. She has now tasted Barnacle Bill. Any hotter, and they're going to have to order a cold shower for Rover. Genimo, CNN, New York. <laughs> Too good. Naming rocks may be an out-of-this-world experience, but a lot of us are wondering when the time will come for Earth visitors to actually go here and pick up those and other Martian artifacts. Let's go back to the Jet Propulsion Lab and CNN's John Zarella with a look into the future. John, and the future certainly is very bright, and we're joined again by uh, Donna Shirley, head of Mars Exploration here. And uh, Donna, that's the question on everybody's mind. So when do humans finally go? Well, humans go when we've, number one, scouted the terrain for them. We're like the Lewis and Clark expedition, going with our robots out to scout the terrain. They'll go when we've had enough time on space station to understand whether humans can really live in space for three years, which is the round trip. And they'll go when the technology's developed enough so that we've got, we can be able to afford to do it cheaply. That's the big, big issue. Now, do you believe that any kind of mounting of a human mission would have to be an international mission? Oh, almost certainly. Uh, even Pathfinder is an international mission. It has German, ca German parts to the camera, and the spectrometer is part German, and these Danish magnets. So there's already an international flavor to almost all the missions. Uh, and certainly International Space Station is going to be a model, I think, for how we mount these large human missions. Do you think that the success of Pathfinder and the hoped-for success of the subsequent missions uh, will continue to whet the appetite for sending humans? Do you think, has, has this been a shot in the arm? Well, it's very difficult to say because human space exploration is more expensive 
that it's, it's, it's dangerous, you know, you have to spend money making it safer. And there's a big project right now called Space Station that has to get finished before we could embark on a Mars mission. So I think that it can't hurt, but I don't know, you know, the interest of people comes and goes and wanes and, and so on, so I can't really predict it. All you, you can predict, though, that in the next decade or so, 10 years, you will have a measured buildup, as they say. That's right. In fact, uh, we have plans all the way through 2016. And by 2016, we hope to have three pieces of Mars back, which is going to give us a, a chance at looking for if there was ever past life on Mars. And that's just about the same time frame that we'd like to mount a human mission to Mars. So it all kind of fits nicely together. It, the, the big mission that everybody is looking forward to in the next seven, eight, ten years would be a sample return mission, correct? Right. And uh, we, the plan right now, if we get the budget that we've put in for in the president's budget this year, is to try a sample return in 2005. Now, it's a three-year round trip because of the way Earth and Mars are going around. So by the time we get it back, it'd be 2008. I have to ask you the question. We haven't talked about it on the show tonight life on Mars. We know we're not going to find it with, with this mission here. Right. Other missions will be more geared towards finding life, knowing where to go. Uh, is there a good possibility we'll be able to answer that question in the next decade or so? Well, the best scientists in the field, the best Mars scientists, believe that if we can get well-selected samples of Mars back from very carefully surveyed, first you survey from orbit, get the right places, you know, find the Yellowstone Park or the Mammoth Hot Springs and go there and get the samples. That'll give us our very best chance. Now this is not easy. If you've ever gone out and tried to find a fossil on the Earth, it's not easy. And these fossils are, you know, way below what you can see. Well, I know that if anyone can do it, it certainly is the team here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, led of course by uh, Donna Shirley. A tremendous team, John Holloman, and uh, it's been uh, certainly an honor for me to be here amongst them for the last uh, week and a half. John? Wish we could all stay, John. You know, in a moment, we'll look back on this week of exploration, excitement, even exultation. Stay with us. There are times here at CNN when you know you've touched a nerve. The phones ring off the wall, the email backs up, your personal answering machine is always filled with 40 or so messages, and people ask for your autograph when you go out with your family to a movie. This week has been one of those times. The fact that humans have established a presence on another planet this week may pale in comparison to some of the other stories in the news, but not in the minds or the hearts of the people who watch this network. You have let us know that you like our extensive coverage of this little piece of America's space program. And you are not just Americans, but citizens of hundreds of countries who have gotten in touch with me and CNN to let us know you like a story that's more good news than bad, that takes you to a place you've never been before, and where, unlike most of real life, everything seems to work. Thanks for joining us. For the team of dozens of women and men at CNN who made this week possible for us on TV, it has been as much fun as it seemed. Here's one more look back to the future. Three, main engine start. One, zero, and liftoff of the Delta rocket with Mars Pathfinder. And the vehicle has cleared the tower. DDL comments report that a signal is barely visible. Let's go home. We can't go home yet. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty. That airbag is not fully retracted. Um, we don't quite know why that is. We have rover data. Communication link between the rover and the lander is working. That has been a, been a big concern. Rover, don't forget to call home occasionally. 
on behalf of President Clinton and all of the people of our country, congratulations on doing an absolutely outstanding job. What a day. What a night. What a time to be alive on planet Earth. Well, we can assure you it's not a hoax. We are on Mars. There is no place on Earth where the rocks are this old. On Mars, they are ancient, ancient stuff. This is the first time that two spacecraft have ever taken a picture of each other. Our rover has nestled up and uh, kissed affectionately Barnacle Bill. <laughs> but remember, the imagination is very important to understanding this mission. And we will try and help stimulate your imaginations as we will stimulate our own. This is unbelievable. You have 70 scientists like kids in candy shops here at the end of fire hoses of data who just grinning from ear to ear. We're already seeing differences in colors, in textures. There looks like there's layering in some rocks. There's that one flat top rock in it. What are those? We gotta go see them. <laughs> well, I think the whole planet was behind us. You know, we did the engineering, but I think the, the people of the planet Earth willed, willed uh, Pathfinder to life on the surface of Mars. The joy that fills my heart has overflowed my body and risen to the heavens and has reached to Mars.